Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Chosen Architect and today we are playing Mystical Block. Now, Mystical Block is a very interesting mod pack. It's been on my radar for a little while. And as you can see, we start on a dirt block. And all I have is this Inferium Essence in my hand. Uh, this is a mod pack that kind of revolves around mystical agriculture, which is kind of cool. Uh, that is a crop growing mod, and we are going to be getting started very fast with this. Now, this mod pack contains over 200 plus mods. A mixture of tech, magic, all kinds of fun stuff is in this mod pack. And so we are going to venture through this together. And uh, yeah, we should be able to cover just about every mod that's in this pack. And yes, it's going to be fun. Now, right off the bat, we are given a quest book along with our Inferium Seed, and this is going to be a simple way to help guide you through the early stages of the pack, and even into the further tech mods that exist in this pack, including Draconic Evolution and Project E, as you may see here. Of course, these mods are not just given to you right away. You have to kind of work for them, much like any tech progression mod pack. But keep in mind, there's also a little bit of magic in here and all of that fun stuff. This pack is based in the 1.16 uh, 5 version, so keep that in mind. Uh, there's not going to be anything that's crazy that's been added, of course, outside of these versions. This is a little bit of an older mod pack. Not crazy old, though. Not like jumping into a 1.12 or 1.17 mod pack. Now, I know you just want to see the progression. Me getting started. How do you get started from just a single piece of dirt, a Ethereum seed, and a hoe you're given? Well, it's just as simple as using the hoe and then placing the Inferium Seed. Now, you may notice that giant thing that's giving me info in the top left. Yeah, that needs to be changed, I think, right off the bat. To do that, we open up the chat and we do the one probe and config. This will pull up a menu that allows us to move this around into different locations. This is the one probe mod. I like to make it fully transparent and also make it as small as I can get it. And so right there is a lot better. It is still pretty intrusive as you can't make it any smaller, but that is what it is. Now, enough of all of that. Right now, I can't really see my plant, but if I move around, I can see this. Now, uh, the way we're gonna be growing this for right now is going to be simply doing the whole twerky twerk thing, the, the, the up and down, hitting the shift key until this thing is fully grown. And uh, now that it's fully grown, we can harvest it. Um, and we get ourselves some Inferium Essence. The first thing I want to do with this Inferium Essence, however, is to right-click the block. That's going to change this into Inferium Farmland, allowing me to have a chance of getting seeds. There's now a 20% secondary chance. You can see that in the tooltip that's uh, taking over most of the screen. And uh, now we have a chance every time we break this of getting an extra seed. But if we follow along with the quest, we actually get some bonus items and some other seeds, a bed and these seed reconstructors and deconstructors. This is going to be kind of interesting. All of these other things talk a little bit more about this mod pack and telling you, hey, it's focused around mystical agriculture and all of that good stuff, which is going to be pretty cool moving forward. Also, if you happen to pin something, which right now these all take up the entire screen, Notice how it says on the right, how to get secondary seed drops. Well, uh, that's because I accidentally clicked the unpin or I clicked the pin button. If you click that, it'll show it up here. It's a really nice way of keeping track of your quest. But in our case, we don't need it. But if you accidentally have that show up, now you know how to get rid of it. All right, so that whole chapter is done. Um, and it just says, welcome to mystical block, which is exactly what we're playing. Now, our first task is going to lead us into overworld or what's left of it which is a kind of neat concept i think uh by default we get a little bit of bread to get started which is always nice for having these individual items but we do need to check the quests and make sure we accept some of these quests because they are going to in be important to us now it does tell us make a grass platform to spawn animals which is something that we're going to be doing later and to get grass it does explain here you're going to have to sift dirt there is extra hilo in here at some point we will be getting into Ex Nihilo. Uh, it does appear there's a mining dimension and all kinds of stuff. I don't want to spoil anything, but there's tinkers. You can just see by all these mod icons, all of the cool things that are in this pack. It does look like we're going to be going to a nether and uh, there's a smithing table. I think even Tetra's in here, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it Yeah, it may or may not be. I don't remember. But all of this stuff in here 
uh, eventually is going to lead us into things like Project D, Draconic Evolution, um, and all kinds of other cool mods, including the Twilight Forest, which is actually kind of a big part of this pack. Um, and uh, we are going to have to kind of progress a little ways through this. So now that I've spent all of my time talking, it is now dark um, and we don't have very much progressed. Uh, thankfully, we do get given a bed. Uh, but yes, it's going to be a lot of this for right now. And the, the basis of this progression is that we get the Inferium seed. We then take the uh, excess Inferium that we're going to be getting. And we are going to be turning that into dirt and expanding this. Luckily, we don't have to shift forever. It's only at the very beginning do we have to shift this much. That is going to be changing very, very soon. Once we have a big enough area to kind of run around in, it's going to get way more efficient. But as you can see right here, we've already gotten a couple of extra Inferium seeds. We now have our dirt and we need to place this, but placing dirt adjacent on dirt is, uh, or on farmland is not super easy. So you're gonna have to jump to place most likely um, because you're a little bit shorter than this block and uh, doesn't allow you to place while you're standing on that side. Now, something you may notice is, uh, well, there's a giant FPS counter up in the top right of the screen. Now, to be able to change this, if you do have your video settings set to auto, let's say, or GY Scale 4, which is kind of where I like it with my particular monitor, you're going to notice that you can't see some options. So you're going to have to lower that down, go to extras, and then disable the show FPS, which is going to be what I'm going to do. I have no need to see that, and it just sort of gets in the way. Clutters up the screen. I need as much screen real estate as possible. Now, if you're enjoying this video up to this point, be sure to click that subscribe button. I like to kind of, you know, ask you guys every now and then, if you would click the subscribe button. Uh, we're getting very close to the 600,000 subscriber mark if you haven't already subscribed. So I'd really appreciate it. And uh, let's get back to crafting more essence and dirt. So I'm about to have enough space where I can do a little bit of running. So right here, let's try and do some running to grow these and fall off. Well, it's actually kind of a good thing that we fell off because I get to show you that we have the forget. Oh no, we have the forgiving void mod, uh, which means we do not die when we land. We just take a lot of damage, which is kind of cool. Now, um, with that in mind, I did see there was Tetra. So I, I was right in that there is Tetra in here, uh, but let's go ahead and harvest this. So um, now that I have a few more crops, I don't have to harvest these individually. I can actually hold down the grave key, which is underneath the escape key, which pulls up ulti mine and allows me to simply harvest these all in one go. That's pretty cool. Now you could use a hoe to do this as well, but you're going to more likely have things falling off the edge. Um, so now that we've gotten this, I can now sort of run, which I believe helps it grow a lot faster than doing the crouch. Of course, uh, it will be kind of painful until we get at least like a little bit more of an area going. Now it is at this point that I want to find the zero zero of the world. And this, this block right here is actually the zero zero of the world, which is the exact middle of our entire sky block here. Uh, and I kind of want to build our initial farm around this point. A cool thing to note is this Inferium farmland doesn't need water. Um, so we don't actually have a water source or anything like that uh, because Inferium Farmland doesn't need it. It's, it's really, really useful. Now that I've made myself so dizzy, <laughs> I now have achieved 16 Inferium Essence, which gets me the potential of getting Insanium Essence right from the start. We could get Supremium. There's a lot of different types we can get. It looks like we got 10 Perdentium, uh, which is actually pretty nice. We can break this down into some Inferium and it's going to grant us a nice little boost in dirt, allowing me to expand my platform a little more, which is going to just give me more room to run and not have to spin in massive circles. Um, so now that we have the inferior methods, we start to get more blocks. Put it in your offhand, and then that way you can go ahead and use it right after you've placed it and hoed the block. Yeah, it makes it so much easier. Notice, by the way, this block will probably turn to regular dirt. Yeah, very quick, very quick. But look at this. At this point, I've progressed pretty quick, and uh, we now have 11 of these seeds, and we're about to get into the production of more seeds, other types of seeds. What I want to do now is I want to make, I want to take this dirt, and I want to turn it into some logs so I can make myself a crafting table and also make sure that I can make another hoe if this one breaks. 
Um, so a very simple crafting table, and I want to put that right in the center here. I think that'll work out pretty nicely. There we go. And we can place our torch back to make sure we have some light when it turns dark again. This is going to lead me into these two machines, the seed deconstructor and the seed reconstructor. Um, these are custom machinery blocks, which are kind of cool. It's a mod that allows you to make your own machines and make them do different things. Um, and in this case, this is going to allow us to make power, and this is going to allow us to make new seeds early on, very basic seeds. Um, and then the energy pipe is going to allow us to send the energy back and forth. So let's go ahead and set up a little bit of an area to do that for right now. Very basic. You can break these machines with your bare hands, by the way, um, if you do not have a pick or anything like that. So I'm going to place it down. There's this one. And then there's this one. Uh, an energy pipe can go in between. And then we are going to link these by sending the power, making this a export and making it send the power over here. And then we're going to basically send seeds to this in order to start producing a little bit of energy. That energy is going to get fed over here. And then we're going to use this combined with some Inferium Essence and dirt to make some dirt seeds. You're going to notice the energy is, is quite dramatic on this. This does not produce a whole lot of power, uh, but it is enough to keep this running, even though it is going to be flickering back and forth. Uh, thankfully, the, uh, the production doesn't stop. Right there. There we go. We now have some dirt seeds. Um, and the dirt seed, I'm going to go ahead and break this. We can grow it and get some dirt essence that we are going to use uh, to make all kinds of other stuff here in the future. But uh, the majority of it is going to be used to make dirt. Um, and then also it will be used to progress us a little bit further into hopefully getting ourselves our first log seed. So in essence, this is how we're starting out the mod pack. So now after progressing a little bit further, I now have the ability to make some logs here and to make some log seeds, or not necessarily log seeds, but they'll be called uh, wood seeds, right? So we can make different variants of our logs. That's going to be pretty nice. So here's our wood seed. And once we've grown this enough, and we have enough of these, we can start to make some logs. And I can kind of choose what material I want to start building out some uh, platforms. Uh, so that way we can have multiple farms like this to run around in. I have enough of these wood essence. Uh, things are going to get a little bit uglier around the base. That's to happen with most skyblocks. You really start off with not many options. Uh, same in this pack. Really, I'm going to be going for some spruce logs. So I have a bunch of those ready for me. Um, and I don't have any chests. So I think right off the bat, probably making just a little bit of storage would be a great idea. Um, even if that means placing some stuff up here. I have nowhere to store all of these things. And it would be kind of a nice thing, I think, to get started with. Um, so, with all of that in storage, I can now start to build off some platforms around these farms. I honestly feel like having just a flat platform just looks really ugly early on. Uh, so, any way that I can add some verticality, I want to do that. Now, it is at this point that I feel like the progression is going to take a turn. We've been farming, and we've been gathering resources this way. But I think things are about to change as I was looking in the quests and we're about to get into tinkers. Now, I do have enough material here to get us into tinkers. But after we've progressed through the tinkers mod, I think some things are about to change. Now, it says to make a basic wooden pickaxe. And then right here, it says make two wooden pickaxe heads. Those are pretty easy to do. Um, let's go ahead and combine all of these tables. They are a multi-block or will end up in a multi-block. You can see right up here. Um, now the part builder, this is where you have the patterns and we're we'll be making pickaxe heads. So we just put the wood in here. I think we can do logs. And now we have two pickaxe heads. Uh, we also want a binding so we can go ahead and get the tool made. And there's a full tinker's pickaxe ready to go. Um, just like so. Also, let's go ahead and make another pickaxe head, because we're actually going to need two of these outside of our pick. So now we have a pick. We've completed what the quests have asked us to do. This is a, a wooden pickaxe. Oh, it's asking us to make a vanilla wooden pickaxe in a very obscure way. It was like this. I had two pickaxe heads, some sticks. Oh, this is actually tool rods, isn't it? Two tool rods in this pattern to get a vanilla wooden pickaxe. Interesting that it asks us to make two like that. 
Okay, so that leads us into the mining dimension. This is where I said things are gonna get a little interesting uh, because it's gonna lead us into a, an entirely different dimension. Um, right off the bat, that's kind of crazy. We can place that down here. Um, and hopefully we get a good spawn in that mining dimension. So we have a pick, we should be able to easily get back and we should be able to craft a mining dimension. So this must be how we get our basic resources here. It says to go mining, we have lapis, we have emerald, we have iron, redstone, all of that apparently we'll be able to get in the mining dimension. That's nifty, okay. So what's this mining dimension look like? And am I going to be entering into somewhere that is gonna be scary? I mean, we don't have any way to make torches or anything like that, so let's go. Okay, so we're in a mining dimension. It is incredibly dark. Very dark. Right here is the mining dimension block. We are apparently at bedrock. We're at negative three, or not negative three, we're at three. Of course, this is 116, which is uh, the, the version that doesn't have the negative numbers. So we are at the bottom of the world right here. But we've already done a few things that we're going to need. We have enough cobble here to technically uh, make it uh, to the next level, right? Ooh, nice, we have a little bit of light. So now you guys can see where we're at. Um, so yeah, we already have enough cobble. We should be able to make a furnace and hopefully get some torches made as uh, goodness. This is gonna be a dark journey. Now to get back, we should be able to just simply right click and we teleport back. Now, one thing I wanna do, this mod is really, really nice. I believe we can actually lower the portal travel sound by clicking this and just bringing up the volume just a little bit. So it's still there, but it's gonna be much, much quieter when we teleport back and forth. I really love this muffler mod. Oh, wow. Okay, so I just went to craft a furnace and realized I can't, because we don't have the ingredients for the furnace. However, we were given a campfire from the start, and this is apparently how we're going to make our torches. We place sticks on here, and that will turn them into torches. Now, to be able to get some stone seeds, we can also place this, apparently, on the campfire, and this is going to smelt them as well, uh, and smelt them into stone. Look at that. And I think we only need four of them to get a stone seed via our reprocessor. So if I put some seeds in here and four of those in there, this should kick off once we have given it power. And that'll get us some stone seeds going, which will be a lot nicer looking, I think, than just using wood everywhere. Now, right away, one of the upgrades I wanna make to my Tinker's pick, not necessarily my regular pick, is going to be a cobblestone head. Uh, because overall, it's better to have a cobblestone head and wooden binding and wooden, ro uh, wooden rod than it is to have a full wooden pickaxe. This is also going to allow me to make repair kits that I can keep on me. And of course, that's always been a problem with Tinkers is making all of that racket whenever you do craft. But to be able to add this, I should be able to put the tool in, put the actual upgrade onto it, and you can see I can upgrade. Ooh, it has the planner mod in here as well, which allows you to plan out what your tools are going to be made out of. That's kind of neat. But there we go. So now we can take this and we should be able to vein mine inside of this dimension. Now that we have some bonus torches, um, I'm gonna try and make at least 64 of these. And we're heading back in there. We're gonna be tearing stuff up, especially since we have vein miner. Now, one thing before we go in, we can craft up regular stone and we can actually put it on here as well. And that's gonna cook it into its next version. And then we can take this and make ourselves furnaces with it. Um, so we are not limited by not being able to get a furnace. We now have the ability to craft a normal furnace just from some cobblestone. So I've moved my mining dimension. Let's head into the mining dimension. Okay, so this time it moved me into a different location and uh, because I did move it. So we're actually in a cave and this is not bad. We spawned in a pretty decent location. There's some coal ore here. We can use, of course, a vein miner to vein mine all of that. Looks like some lead as well. Um, and, ooh, even iron right off the bat. Yes. So we get some iron ore chunks. Uh, does this mean that we have... So yeah, we just smelt those. Those are pretty nice. Some silver. Um, we definitely need diamond and redstone. So a little bit of redstone here would be nice. I do not... My, my tool cannot mine it just yet, though. Yeah, it looks like a little bit of iron. Now, what I want is to kind of create sort of an elevator. So I'm going to hold down the grave key and hold down shift, 
and then scroll wheel, and I can make myself what is called a mining tunnel. Now, um, one of the mining tunnel mines down. We want to make an escape tunnel that's going to mine up because we're actually on the lower level. And so doing this is going to really hurt my durability on my tool. But as you can see, it does a really good job at creating a mining tunnel, like a perfect mining tunnel leading up. So of course there are going to be blocks that you're going to have to definitely break through in order to uh, to get up. Um, but uh, now that I have my pick broken, I can just simply repair it and continue to use the vein miner. Oh, I love this. And here I have found prosperity ore. This is going to be super useful. This particular ore right here is what's going to allow us to make new seeds um, in uh, sort of the new mechanics. So there we go. We just unlock them. And this leads into the production of upgrading our Inferium and making ourselves our first Inferium crystal, allowing us to go into higher tier essence. Now, I was looking at the quest line and uh, determined that, well, we actually can't go into Ex Nihilo yet. Um, we can go into it a little bit, but there's no real need. Um, when we can actually craft a regular iron pick, I thought it was going to lead us into crafting it via Tinkers, but it doesn't appear to. Um, we actually just need to take the iron that we have, and we just need to make an iron pick to be able to mine at iron level. And of course, it's still probably better for us to vein mine with this tool and not vein mine with the iron pick. But yeah, we're going to be spending a lot more time in this dimension as we have to find diamond, lapis, emeralds, and all of this in order to be able to get into the sieving. Now, of course, this wouldn't be a chosen series if I didn't get diamond in the first episode. And here we are. Bam, we get ourselves a bit of diamond, which is kind of nice. There we go. So we found diamond, but we are still lacking things like gold and a bunch of other stuff. Now that I have diamond, I should be able to get into the Ex Nihilo. But first, it wouldn't be architect-like if I didn't build. So I'm going to be taking all of this and we are going to be building. So cue the block placing. And just like that, the basic farm is up and running, ready to go. Now, all we have to do is get into a little bit of Ex Nihilo. Now, for us to get into Ex Nihilo in here, all I'm going to have to do is farm up some wood essence and uh, just simply make some regular saplings. Um, and then I'm going to need a crook. So if you don't know the basis of uh, Ex Nihilo, it involves basically crooking some leaves. So once we get some leaves grown up in here, get these logs, might just be better off running. So we have our leaves just like this. If we crook this, we'll get these uh, silkworms and then we just have to simply farm the silkworms and place them onto the leaves. And we should get tons, specifically if we, like grow the trees out like this. And I, I place the silkworms on and I let them sit for just a moment. This will grant me quite a bit of wool. Like we're gonna have more wool than we know what to do with here in a second, or more string, specifically. And just like that, it is all ready to go. Hope you enjoyed the little time lapse there. Uh, as you can see, I think we have to crook it to be able to get the string. I could be wrong there, um, but I think you get more. You definitely get more saplings from leaves by using the crook. And you also get these edible silkworms, so you can cook these and eat them, even though bread would probably be pretty easy to get at this point. Now, with all of this string, we should be able to make a mesh, and I should be able to now get into the Ex Nihilo mod. Um, so over here into the Ex Nihilo, we need to make these diamond sticks, and that's where the diamond came into play uh, that we just farmed up. So I can use this to make two things. Technically, I'm going to make four of these, uh, using up all of my diamonds, because I think that is way more important for this, because I want to make a heavy oak sieve. Now, the main reason I need this mesh in the first place and need to get into this uh, Ex Nihilo is so I can get some grass seeds to get some passive animals spawned in. 
I think getting some animals is going to be really helpful, specifically for a backpack and all kinds of other useful things, such as leather and chickens and eggs. Um, so, uh, as of right now, it's kind of pointing us to make flint mesh. Uh, now, getting flint in this pack should be pretty simple, since we do have a Farmer's Delight in here. And that means we can use a cutting board. And if we place a cutting board down, this is pretty cool, because we can use a shovel uh, to, to grant ourselves quite a bit of flint. Quite a bit of flint. So all we have to do is this. Uh, and then we also need a hammer to be able to, for example, get uh, a bunch of gravel. Unless we just happen to stumble upon it in the mining dimension. Uh, but I'm going to show you. If we go ahead and turn this into gravel, we should be able to use the gravel that we have and uh, not take any gravel loss for doing this. Instead, what we're going to be losing out on is we're going to be losing out on the durability on our tool on this. So if we keep this in and we just constantly rotate like this, we're going to just start collecting a bunch of flint. As you can see right here, this is probably one of the easiest ways to get flint. So that right there means we have a immediate upgrade on our mesh. There we go. We have a flint mesh. Uh, we have ourselves a heavy sieve. So there's our heavy sieve, our flint mesh. And what I need to do is take all of my dirt. Of course, I need to sort my inventory. But I need to take all of my dirt that I have. And we should be able to compress it down. Uh, pretty simple. And I can now sieve for lots and lots of stuff. Um, this is going to spit out so much material. Um, I'm going to have to definitely sort my inventory. So yeah, nothing like good old Exna Hilo. Yeah, I'm just sieving. Just sieving a whole bunch. A whole bunch of sieving here. And just hoping, fingers crossed, that I get this, the grass seeds. Um, I want to turn these areas into grassy areas. These are going to be crops, so I'm not worried about them. Uh, but these areas, I do want to be able to grow animals. Grow animals. I want to uh, animals to be able to spawn on those platforms. Now, one interesting thing, the pack doesn't really tell you how to get, or at least I didn't see it in the quest line. And that's how to get water. It doesn't really tell you, even though it expects you to already know. Um, so, if you want to know how to get water, here we go. Make a regular oak crucible. Um, or just really any crucible. We can actually make a spruce crucible, technically. So, if we grab this and throw all of the blocks together, we can easily make ourselves a way to get some water. I recommend making two of those if you can. It'll probably make things a bit faster. Um, and then the heat source that can go underneath here, it's probably the, uh, the best option is probably going to be, uh, let's see, campfires. Yeah, campfires are times four, which is even better, yeah, even better than lava. Then with this, all I'm going to need is a pair of shears, which I could probably get away with just dumping the saplings, but it'll be better if I can just go ahead and grow a tree, shear it, and then just use the leaves. And we fill this all the way up. Both of them, and these should both turn into buckets worth of water right here. So, and after a little bit of time, I now have a bucket of water. Um, and I should be able to make an infinite water source just like normal. Now, I guess it's at this point that you have to sort of decide, are you going to stay into the mining dimension and just do regular mining? Or do you want to go the route of sieving and doing that process? I, I kind of like the idea of just mining. I feel like we could find a lot more diamond and, and iron early on this way than doing the sieving process, even though we're still going to need to do the sieving eventually, I'm assuming for the nether quartz and things like that, because if I'm to believe this is a sky block, most likely the nether is also an, an empty void that only contains the, uh, the structure there. Well, guys, with that, I'm going to have to call it. Today's episode has been fun. We've got a lot of progress done, and it's only going to get crazier from this point. Believe me. Once we get just an inkling of a little bit of progression, it's going to blow up. You're going to blink and be like, wow, that happened fast. Um, and uh, yeah, especially with packs like this, I definitely think that uh, the farms are going to explode here soon. Um, but of course, guys, if you did enjoy, click that subscribe button if you haven't already, and uh, ring that little notification bell if you wouldn't mind, uh, especially if you haven't already. And uh, guys, be sure to join the Discord. We have an amazing community of over 28,000 members as of the time of this recording, and I would love for you to join it as well. Uh, it's a great place to make friends. We also have a premium service, which gives you access to our supporter servers, which are quite nice. 
Uh, and also, you get access to world downloads and all kinds of fun stuff like that. So be sure to check that out. Guys, I appreciate you so, so very much. Speaking of those supporters, I do like to give shout outs to the supporters at the end of the video. And let's uh, think one of the supporters of today's video. And of course, I'm going to get a better place for these signs as we progress through here. But for right now, a sign will have to do. And that huge thanks is going to go out to Vex21, or sorry, Vex2001, my, uh, my goofy brain. Thank you so, so very much. And of course, guys, with that, I will see you in the next episode. And as always, thanks for watching.